The Prime Minister of Japan has outlined his vision and priorities for the new year. Shinzo Abe spoke after visiting one of the country's oldest shrines. He says he wants to push forward bold reforms to build the economy, social security, and the communities devastated by the 2011 disaster. We are determined to revive the Japanese economy. To do that, we must push forward bold reforms that have never taken place before. Reconstruction from the disaster in 2011, rebuilding education, reforming social security, rebuilding diplomacy and security revitalizing local regions, and creating a society where women can shine. We will face all these challenges head on. These will be the most drastic reforms since the end of World War II. But no matter how rough the paths may be, I am determined to implement reforms with the people for the future of our children. I want to make this year one in which all these reforms move ahead. The Prime Minister said this year will be a critical juncture for Japan as it marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the war. He promised his administration will step up the country's contribution to world peace. We'll continue to stay on the path as a peace-loving nation. In the drastically changing international environment, our commitment to sticking to this path will be even stronger. We'll resolutely protect people's lives and happiness. And we'll prepare new security legislation to make that possible. In the past 70 years, Based on our deep remorse over World War II, we have devoted ourselves to building a free and democratic country, and we have contributed in every way possible to the peace and development of our friends in Asia and around the world. With that pride in our hearts, Japan must continue to make efforts for the peace and stability of the world, based on the spirit of proactive contribution to peace toward the 80th, 90th, and 100th anniversaries since the end of the war. I want to clearly convey that determination to the world this year on the 70th anniversary. The year 2015 marks an important milestone for Japan and the world. It's the 70th anniversary of the U.S. atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the closing days of World War II. Japan's Foreign Minister Fumio Kishida told NHK that he wants to attend an international conference set for the spring to review the non-proliferation treaty, the NPT. I believe leading the debate on nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation is a crucial mission for Japan as the only nation to be attacked with atomic bombs. I strongly want to attend the NPT meeting. Kishida, who is from Hiroshima, said he has particularly strong feelings on the issue. The minister stressed his idea of continuing to urge the early enforcement of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. I think making realistic and concrete efforts, and doing so one by one, are important steps toward realizing a world without nuclear arms being held by any nation. NPT nations hold a review meeting every five years. This year, they'll meet from April to May in New York. Delegates will study whether member nations are properly carrying out their treaty obligations. They will also decide how countries will work to achieve nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. The UN General Assembly adopted the treaty, but the United States, China and other countries have yet to ratify it. agencies in Japan also started work on Monday after the New Year break. Reconstruction Minister Wataru Takeshita says the government will accelerate the rebuilding of areas in northeastern Japan hit by the massive earthquake and tsunami in March 2011. 
We must do our utmost so that we can start showing to the world the real strength of the affected areas and Japan. Takeshita said many evacuees are spending their fourth winter in temporary housing. He said it's the government's mission to make it possible for them to return the home. The regulation authority says the task of regulators will take on greater importance this year. We will be required to carry out new kinds of work if the country's reactors start going back online. All of Japan's nuclear power plants are currently offline. The regulators have been examining 21 reactors to see if they meet new government regulations introduced after the Fukushima accident. In September, two reactors at the Sendai nuclear plant in southwestern Japan became the first to clear the new regulations. And the NRA is expected to approve the safety conditions at Takahama nuclear plant in central Japan early this year. Tanaka says the regulators will be required to inspect facilities in order for utilities to restart reactors. I want you to keep in mind that we must carry out our mission with an even greater focus than last year. This year, screenings of boiling water reactors, the same type as the reactors that suffered meltdowns in Fukushima, are expected to get underway. Foreign tourists visited Japan during the New Year holidays, and one place they've spent their money is department stores. Two out of four leading department store operators have reported rises in the first three days of 2015. Sogo and Seibu reports that sales gained about 2% over the same period last year. Officials at Daimaru Matsuzakaya say sales are up 0.7%. Department store officials say the weaker yen is the main reason the number of foreign tourists has risen. They say it's especially noticeable in big cities like Tokyo and Osaka. They say luxury brand clothing and cosmetics are popular with shoppers from overseas. Some tourists bought lucky bags containing mystery bargains. This man from China was one of them. Lucky bags sold in Japan are very popular. Every year I buy lots of things for my child. I wake up early on the first day of the year to go shopping. A department store official says he expects spending by Japanese customers to recover this year. Cheerful cries of bidders at Japanese fish markets are music to the ears of seafood lovers. And in the year's first fish auctions, the bidding was energetic. In Himi, central Japan, fishery workers clapped their hands in a timeless ritual and prayed for a bountiful catch. Adult yellowtails, or buri, were for sale in the first auction. They weighed about 10 kilograms on average, but the largest was over 15 kilograms. Bluefish made their 2015 debut in Shimonoseki, western Japan. The fish, known as fugu, are a wintertime delicacy in Japan. Fishermen brought more than nine tons of fugu to the market. Buyers and sellers negotiated deals in the traditional style. They grasped each other's fingers, which were hidden from other bidders, inside a cloth sleeve. This year, fewer wild fugu were caught because of bad weather over the New Year holiday. That drove blowfish prices 15% higher than last year. The first tuna auction of the year was held at Japan's largest fish market. A single tuna caught near a port in northern Japan fetched over $37,000. Bell signaled the start of bidding early Monday morning at Tokyo's Tsukiji Fish Market. More than 2,000 frozen and fresh tuna from ports around Japan and other countries were put on the auction block. Wholesale dealers yelled out high bids on the fish. A bluefin weighing 180 kilograms from the port of Oma in Aomori Prefecture fetched the highest price this year. 
Skiji Market's facilities are aging, and there are plans to relocate it to another waterfront district in Tokyo by November of next year. Political and business leaders in Japan are trying to make the working world more attractive for mothers as part of efforts to boost the economy. Sixty percent of women in this country quit their jobs with the arrival of their first child. It's a big loss for a nation struggling with an aging population and a shrinking labor force. Starting today, we'll bring you a four-part series on people trying to mine the potential of women. The owner of a nursing wear maker is among them. Her female employees can bring more than just their briefcases to the office. NHK World's Keiko Aso explains. This is Yuka Mitsuhata's office in Tsukuba, north of Tokyo. Staff can bring their infants of up to two years of age to the office. Mothers work shorter hours than other employees, taking into consideration the health conditions of the children. The practice is not limited to clerical staff. Store clerks at the company's shop in central Tokyo provide services while caring for their babies. It's not a problem if babies get cranky and cry. With nursing clothes, a mother can breastfeed her child without showing any skin. Being able to bring their baby to the workplace is a boon for mothers who want to raise children but don't want to give up their jobs. This makes me much happier than leaving my child with someone else while working. I'm so lucky that I can be with my child, work and get paid. Yuka Mitsuhata set up her company in 1997. Mothers who bought the products began asking her to let them work there. That's how this workplace filled with women and their babies came into existence. I don't think women's work abilities drop just because they have babies. I believe it's the opposite. Skills like management improve, and so does concentration in the workplace. It's possible not just for us to attract skilled labor by creating a supportive work environment. The major concern among working mothers is that they can't predict when they will need to take time off to care for sick children. Staff members constantly share information to prepare for such cases. This team files documents that show work progress. The team members also notify each other of their children's health conditions through a chat publication. This helps them get ready to switch shifts if they need to. It's necessary for us to remain professional, even if we come to the office with our children. It's also important to support each other. If your children get sick, you will need help from others. It could happen to anyone. So I think everyone here knows they must help each other out. This working style has inspired a new service. The workers have become good at taking care of other people's children, as they do it every day. The company has begun giving guidance to bankers and municipal employees. It provides role-playing and advice on how to deal with the children who are running around, for example. Mitsuhata believes that her company's unique system of working with babies in the office could change views on women's participation in the workforce. Bringing children to work changes the mindset of mothers as well as those around them. Children who see women working with their babies close by may grow up believing it's normal. I think it's minor things like this that bring about change. So it's important to put your thoughts into practice right away, whatever they are.